they should have to remove everything. <laughs> <coughs> you know, like, <coughs> again, this is another way of demonstrating the fact that this business, this mission, is not for luxury. It's not for enjoyment. This is a hard work mission, you know. Okay. We have another call, Dr. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, we take this caller now. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program. Uh, what's up? Doctor? Yeah. yeah, I want to ask a question. Yeah. You're welcome. Like, I have never been to Mecca for Hajj. You've never been there? To Mecca, yeah, I've never been there. Okay. Okay, I want to go to Hajj for the first time. Okay. And I have a mother who is sick. Who is sick? Yes. So, okay, can I do the two Hajj together? That of mine and that of my mother. Your mom is also going with you? Yes. Oh, no, no, she's not going, she's staying. Oh, she's staying. Ah, she's staying. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I think we got that question. Yeah, yeah. And doctor will answer that. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's a good question. No, naturally, you cannot do, in fact, you cannot do Hajj for anybody prior to you performing your own Hajj. Yeah, it, 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 this, it, it, in, in Islamic uh, jurisprudence, it is allowed to go for Hajj on behalf of somebody who is unable to do. And the majority of the ulama of the scholars that this person must, must not be alive. Like somebody, the father or the mother or an uncle who was unable to go to Mecca until the person died. So you now decide to go to Mecca for him or for her. This, this, will, this will be accepted. Provided that you've already performed your own Hajj. Now in your own case, this is your first time. You have never performed your Hajj. <laughs> and this individual obligation, the way your mother is obliged to go to Hajj, if she can do, you are equally obliged or, or obligated to go to Hajj if you can do. <laughs> so when you go, you can only perform Hajj for yourself. <laughs> Pray for your mother. Uh, may Allah the Almighty, uh, uh, you know, uh, make her recover. If Allah makes her recover mm -hmm. uh, next year, who knows? Allah's blessing can come and you send her to Mecca. Mm -hmm. But you cannot perform Hajj for your mother because you have not performed your own Hajj. You cannot perform Hajj for anybody prior to performing your, to performing your own Hajj. Mm -hmm. So you can only perform your own uh, this year. Uh, if you go, ne, ne, you, your mother uh, cannot go. You, you cannot perform Hajj for him this time. For this time, do your own Hajj, like I said. But next time, inshallah. Uh, you can either send your mother if she's back to health, or otherwise you go for her once because you have already done your hajj. Okay. Uh, okay. Doctor, another question here. The need to be pure mm. all the time with mm. ablution and yeah, well, yeah. yeah, through the hajj process. How important is that? Before we come to the doctor, we have this question. Let's yeah. take this. Assalamu alaikum, questioner. Wa alaikum assalam. Bismillah. Yes. Your program is very interesting. Yeah, thank you very much. Can you adjust your voice a bit? Okay. I mean, uh, today I was listening to a BBC radio. Okay. And uh, Nigerian prison is a problem, the women. Yeah. Concerning about uh, if you are going to hide, mm. you have to go with a male partner or a husband or something like that. But I want to know. Do you have any idea about that? Yeah, I think that's Actually, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah. we'll say something about it. Yeah. yeah for sure. You know, <coughs> it used to be this rule, there's this rule of Islam mm. that women, uh, when they travel, mm. they either travel with, if they are married, they travel with their husbands or with close relatives. Mm. That is for the, sake, for the sake of their own security. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and uh, you know, physically, most usually men are stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the level of uh, uh, a struggle uh, that men can go through to survive m m m mostly might be very difficult for many women. And that is why the rule used to, be, used to say this, that uh, when they women, when they travel, whether it is high or not high, of course, of course high including, uh, if they are married and they are going with their husbands fine or with relatives, uh, close relatives, who will definitely jealously uh, help them, guard and protect them. But now, where we are now, a lot of changes have happened. A lot of development have happened. Countries send Hajj contingencies. They send Hajj missions. So women, when they go, they are part of the Hajj mission. Mm -hmm. They are equally protected by the government of the Gambia mm -hmm. and the contingent of the, of the Hajj contingent of the government of the Gambia and also equ equally protected by the Hajj, by the Saudi government. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, this is not a, 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 an important requirement anymore. Hello? We take this caller before I also... Hello? Hello? Alex, 
Yes. Hello? Hello? Yeah, it seems we missed that, doctor. Pl please, anybody calling? We uh, crave your indulgence to please reduce the volume of your TV so that we can communicate better. Yes, I also heard this today uh -huh. that uh, Ni most Nigerians uh, encountered some problems in Medina or Makka, uh -huh. especially those under 40. Yeah. Yeah, because they are not really mahrams and stuff. Yes. Yeah, but uh, I think act actually I most of those going from the Gambia yeah. are above 40. One. No, yeah. Secondly, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Nigeria, perhaps this, the number yeah, this is color, uh, too much also. We take this caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Bismillah. Abu uh, Bakar, I just want to ask a question. I was just watching the TV. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. I'm 25 years old. Okay. I'm like, somebody want to take me to primigrate in Mecca? in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Yeah. But then I was supposed to go with somebody. Okay. Yeah. And then if I go, mm. like my mom is at home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I come back mm. and they decide to put me another house, like they said they furnish the house and to make everything good. Mm. And whilst the needy, the poor, uh, the poor people are near to me, mm. Whether to kill a goat or a sheep or a bull, mm. and just for my welcoming. Mm -hmm. So how do you see that too? I just want to know. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I think this is a very unique uh, person. You're thinking very positively. Mm -hmm. Majority of Gambians are not thinking that positive way. Mm -hmm. If if uh, you are very right, hundred percent. The 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 luxurious way that we we we. Uh, treat our pilgrims when they return to Makkah. It's not necessarily Islamic. It may not be haram, but you're right. If you have so many people, more than m the majority of people who stay with you, extremely poor and living under the poverty line, uh, before you spend that money in uh, one or two days, yes, uh, take the money and give it to them. Allah will reward you. In fact, you, it is like you continuing the Hajj mission. You have returned from a mission, and now you are continuing on the mission of helping the poor. Well, if you control the process, if you control the funds, if you can tell them to give the funds, instead of lavishly spending the fund, killing bulls and, and cooking you know, large quantities of food, get the fund, have a control over it, and make sure that you dish it out to the poor, Allah will reward you. Yeah. Allah, Allah. yeah, in some cases, you don't see those, uh, it, uh, those uh, types of uh, extravagance. Mm -hmm. Some will just organize a simple ceremony yeah, for yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Is that acceptable yeah, also? Yeah, of course. It's normal. It's typical of any, any uh, you know, uh, but who returns from a journey. And he also said one thing, to furnish to your house, beyond your come. Is, is, are those things acceptable? Uh, not necessarily. It's not a bad thing though at all. I mean, to furnish your house, to make your house more uh, comfortable, there's nothing bad with it. But I think he has a mission. He has a very important message. Yeah, that is the, the yeah. those who extremely do it. If the, f if the house is already okay, to a good level, before you further spend money on that, and you give have a lot of people living below the poverty line in yeah. your neighborhood, mm -hmm. why don't you give, in, give them the money? Yeah. If, if you can do that, that's what Islam prefers. Yeah. And that is the way that Muslims should behave, should live. And if we are living that, that, that way, mm -hmm. we, will, we always remember the, the golden era of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, yeah. one of the, the, the Umayyad caliphs. And although he's not among the fourth caliphs, but he's usually defined or classified as the fifth caliph. He ruled the Islamic world for two years, mm -hmm. but the two years that he ruled the Islamic world, the second year, mm -hmm. there was no miskin to receive zakat okay. from the Islamic state. So, sorry, let's take this call. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. alaikum. Wa alaikum. Bismillah. Yes, my mother really wants to talk to you. No problem. In Manila, okay? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Why is Lana? Nam? Yeah. Nam? 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 Amen, amen, amen. 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 Amen, amen